Catherine Benincasa was born in Siena, Italy on March 25, 1347. She was one of the youngest children in her very large, lower class family that included over 20 other siblings. Catherine had a twin sister named Giovanna who did not survive past infancy. She was born during the time period of the Black Death, so times were tough for her and her family. She lost many siblings due to the plague, and many around her feared for their lives because of the epidemic. Through it all, she still managed to stay positive and have faith in God. Many people who knew Catherine said she was a very joyous child. Catherine was so happy and cheerful that she got the nickname Yorsomi, which is the Greek word for joy. As she became an adult, she began to practice some of the corporal works of mercy, such as feeding the hungry, visiting the imprisoned, and visiting the sick. Catherine also displayed spiritual works of mercy that include praying for the living and the dead, counseling the doubtful, and instructing the ignorant. When Catherine was six, she went through an event that is believed to have affected her decision on her future vocation. Catherine began to look up at the sky and did not move while she was on her way home from visiting her married sister. Her brother had gone ahead and then was calling her over and over again. He finally came back and grabbed her hand. Catherine then began to cry because she had been looking at Jesus, St. Peter, St. Paul, and St. John. They had disappeared when her brother had grabbed her hand. Within a year, Catherine made a secret vow to give her whole life to God. By the time Catherine was 12, her mother wanted her to marry. At first, Catherine acted like a normal teen by dressing fancy and dyeing her long hair. She later regretted this decision and cut her hair and informed her family that she did not want to marry. Her mother was extremely angry and attempted to punish Catherine by giving her tiring housework to do. Catherine obeyed her mother and her father soon realized that her parents should let her do as she pleased. In 1366, Catherine was praying and Jesus then appeared to her and gave her a ring. This was a symbol of her being his bride. She was the only person that could see the ring throughout her whole life. In 1366, Catherine became a Third Order Dominican when she was 18 years old. She then went to visit those in jail and help the sick of the town. She would also feed the hungry by giving them eggs. These are examples of her performing the corporal works of mercy, such as feeding the hungry, visiting the imprisoned, and visiting the sick. Catherine wrote letters to people in every condition of life, and she also prayed for them. Ever since she was a child, she was always optimistic about the hardships in her life and the lives of others. She tried to teach people her way of thinking, and she taught this through example. By these actions and ways of life, Catherine displayed spiritual works of mercy, such as counseling the doubtful, instructing the ignorant, and praying for the living and the dead. Catherine Benincasa had a few requirements to officially be canonized as a Catherine had fame of sanctity, which is required to start the process. She needed to perform a miracle, and there needed to be a witness. This miracle is also known as the beatification of a saint. After one miracle is performed, a second miracle is needed for canonization and the final declaration of saint. St. Catherine's final miracle took place when only her head was taken to be smuggled by a If her whole body was taken, she would have been caught by guards. People smuggling her body prayed to her to help them. Her head turned into rose petals, and while the guards checked the bag, it turned back to normal when she returned to Siena. She was officially named St. Catherine. Catherine spent her whole life devoted to God. Even though her life was short, she lived it to the fullest by having a close relationship with God. She died on April 29, 1380. Catherine once said, to the servant of God, every place is the right place, and every time is the right time. She lived us by a great example. No matter where she was, and no matter what time it was, she was always helping others. She practiced corporal works of mercy, such as feeding the hungry, visiting the imprisoned, and visiting the sick. Catherine also displayed spiritual works of mercy that include praying for the living and the dead, counseling the doubtful, and instructing the